Okay, so I want to make a new loop knife for work. Um, this is one of my old ones, uh, and as you can see, it is you probably can't. Yeah, it is actually a loop. And this one, like they all go, is broken, split in the middle there, right down the centre. So instead of going out and buying a new one, because they are hellishly expensive or can be, I am going to try and make just the blade. So I've been on eBay, got myself some knife steel. It was described as knife making steel, they didn't say what grade. It's 30mm by 8 uh, by eighth or 3mm, 30mm by 3mm. I wanted 25 but they didn't have 25 so I thought I'd cut it down. So I'm going to try and make it out of this. What I've done, this is another part of one that's broken. I've laid it onto a piece of steel and just drawn around it and then done the same We'll see the other side. So that's my rough template I want, this piece here. So I'm going to take this and try and bend it to that arc and then we'll anneal it, cut out the, the little semicircle, try and sharpen it up, see how we get on. So let's give it a go, go over to the fire, and get on. Right, so this stuff is pretty tricky to bend with it being so thin it just wants to buckle as you can see so you just have to persevere just hit it gently don't try and go too fast too quick and keep straightening it and it will go it does it does go here we are you see it's going already now had I thought about it I thought I want only needed inch wide because the blade is only an inch wide but it's it's obviously bent had I gone for something like say I don't know 40 mil or whatever I wouldn't even need to bend it I could have just cut it out from the one piece but hey ho swings and roundabouts you know I've got the facility to bend it so I'll bend it if you haven't then buy it wider and cut it out I think that's going to do it. Looks about right. I'll be able to get that piece out of there. Now this is where I'm going to make my first cock up. Hopefully my only cock up. So let's mark it. It says on the plate there, 9 by 1. I should have taken note. And what I've done, I've actually cut it, or I'm going to cut it, the width of the template. And that's wrong. I only it's only that size on the template because I hadn't got a bigger bit of steel when I was marking it out never mind so there we go and I'm still using the graph um, cutting disc it's still working so I've marked it out onto the template or onto the the bit of steel from the template and as I say it is a bit short but we'll we'll get over it now this one I'm going to grind out because the last one I made, I did it with the belt, the bandsaw, but not everyone's got a bandsaw. So I thought most farriers who might want to make one of these have usually got access to um, grinders of some description. They've either got their bowl door in the truck or something like this in the workshop or even just um, an angle grinder. And that's what I'm going to use for the next bit. Just going to whip the centre out. Now I've done the outside profile. I'm just going to have this bit out with a ordinary angle grinder. So I've clamped it to the vise. And so I haven't annealed this because I'm grinding it out. So it actually cuts out a process. Otherwise you'd have to anneal it, wait for it to cool down, which takes quite a long while if you want to anneal it properly leave it to cool in uh, the embers of the fire or something like that so I haven't actually bothered so that's one advantage of grinding it out rather than cutting it so we've just about got the worst of that out there we go now you can finish it off with a flat disc but I'm just going to do it with the belt grinder because I've got it and it's it's there and so you can you can easily get the the uh, flap disc in there to 
finish off that inner radius. That's all it needed just to take the rough bits off. So that's about it. I've just got to now work out where I'm going to uh, grind the blade part along here. Again, I'm going to do that, start it with the angle grinder with a flap disc on, and I'm just going to gently run the flap disc back and forward till I've got something like what I want. I'm going to finish this off with a nice, sharp, very fine file. It's a half round file, so it gets in nicely. That's about as thin as I want it. I'm just going to touch the back up as well, just to make sure it's all level. Alright, that's about it. Almost ready for sharpening, but not quite. We'll leave that till the next bit. Now, swings and roundabouts. Because I didn't anneal it, I'm going to have to warm this up because I'm worried that I might break it because I hadn't annealed it. Uh, I'm not going to just try it and see because I don't want to break it now I've got this far. So, I'm heating it up. If you haven't got a gas torch then you may well find it easier to anneal it first but if you've got a map gas anything like that that will heat it up or you can just do it in the forge and, and bend it but as I say I've got to do it like this because I haven't annealed it but there you go we get around these things Right, so that's about the sort of shape we're looking for. We'll just sort of put some wings on it. Um, I'm just guessing what they're going to be. And now we're going to mark the centre so that we can bend it because we want quite a tight centre bend. And again, I'm going to just do this with the gas because well just because it's easier you can get a nice confined spot of heat just like that because as I say we want a nice tight bend at the right at the point Not, again I'm just guessing I don't quite know exactly what sort of bend now again this is I almost regretted once I'd done this that I'd done it with gas I would have been think better off with the doing it in the forge um, again it's preference I suppose as long as you can get it hot it doesn't really matter how you do it I suppose but I I sort of struggled a little bit doing this I'm just trying to put some shape into the to each side because they're sort of I don't know what shape you'd call it but they're almost flat in the middle and round at each end and then of course when you're doing the other side you can't do it because the vice is in the way so it's uh, yeah I definitely think I would have been better off holding it in a pair of tongs and doing it in the uh, over the anvil and you've got to be very careful because the thin bottom edge where the actual blade edge is moves much easier than the other part. So I'm just going to squeeze that together, those two blades. There you go. And that's sort of the shape we want, but it's still not right. You can see there's a bit of a kink in it. It wants moving over. So what I'm going to do is go to the forge. Now I'm dry fitting that, and you can see why I want to alter it. There's a gap there just see it where it comes up to the handle this is quite an unusual handle they don't normally do that but this one does so I want to try and get it as close as possible so again this is very delicate because it's very thin now 
and it moves very quickly and you you can really get some nasty kinks in it very easily which are quite difficult to get out so just go real gently I'm just tapping this very lightly on the anvil to try and improve my shape and I'm doing as you can see most of it cold which it will do and I think I'm going to leave it at that call it a day at that it's not brilliant but it'll do I think so I've let it to cool down so it has annealed so I'm just going to Put it back or oh, I have put it back in the handle I'm just going to drill for the rivet well, actually I'm not going to use a rivet I'm going to use some bolts nuts and bolts the same nuts and bolts I used on my knife bevel grinding jig and the reason I'm doing that is because if I put it all together with rivets after I've heat treated it and during use I find that it's actually too soft too hard or whatever I've then got to try and drill out the rivets. I thought if I do it this way, at least I can just undo the screws, take it out, do whatever I need to do to it and put it back. So I'm just counterboring the wood a little bit this side so that I can seat the nuts into. That's the side the nuts are going into. I've made it undersized so that they have to be forced in so that they'll hold themselves nice and tight. And then this side I'm just countersinking for the head. And these are the things I'm going to use. I use on all sorts of stuff. They'll go in there nice and flush. And then the nut, which is a nylock nut, only because that's all I've got, will sit in the other side. So right, dry fit that's sort of how it's going to go uh, nice and thick at the point because a it's going to help stop that breaking like the others do and it might last a bit longer I can keep sharpening it so let's do the heat treat so I've got the fire just ticking over I don't want to get this too hot too quickly I want it to soak a little while let's check it for magnet no it's still magnetic it's a bit longer and it still doesn't take long to heat up even with the fire just ticking over because it is so thin put it in uh, sort of like spine first so you don't burn the, sh the sharp edge and that's non-magnetic now so that's I'm cooling this out in water I did my last one in oil and it didn't go all that well so I think I'm thinking that whatever this steel is it's better suited to water quenching. And that is nice and hard now. File's just slipping off of that. So let's do the heat treat. Now this, ideally, you'd want to do in an oven. I should have taken this home, done it in my household oven. You'd get a much more even heat. But I'm in a hurry. I'm lazy. So I'm just going to do it with the gas, the map gas. And you'll see what happens why it would have been better see that's going hot already and the other side isn't even anywhere near so I'm just letting that soak a little bit quench and you'll see that they're actually not the same colour both sides so I might find one side harder than the other so I've just given it a quick polish up on my um, bench polisher and I'm just putting the final edge on with a little diamond dresser now this is quite blunt this one it's an old one and it's only sharp on the very ends where I haven't used it much so I'm just dressing that up that feels nice and sharp and this is the sort of dressing up I do almost on a daily basis probably every other day just to keep an edge on them do the same the other side and then once I get too blunt for this sort of touch up then I'll go over them with either the Dremel or a, a very fine sanding disc and then go off with the diamond again right put it together 
You can see I'm just tapping those into the wood so that they hold themselves in there. Because obviously I'm not going to be able to get a spanner in there. You can see at the back there, that's only just got it that bolt because of my balls up with the lengths. But it won't matter, that'll fill up with mud probably. That looks okay, just give it a clean up, sand it down a bit, re oil it. So I've just got some fairly coarse grit, it's off a, a belt that broke. I'm just going to give this a nice little rub, rub down because this handle is actually pretty old it broke a long while ago and I had it for a couple of years before it broke so it's pretty ancient that looks a bit better looks a bit newer now so I'm just going to get some oil give it a quick oil I've got some boiled linseed Give this a dose. It's good stuff this. It does smell a little bit, but I've got some different oil I use for if it's like a knife I'm gonna use at home in the kitchen or anything like that that doesn't smell and it's food safe. I think it's called teak oil. Might be wrong, but whatever it is anyway, it's for food. Whereas this stuff certainly isn't. That's really soaking that oil up. This bit of wood must be really, really dry. I'm going to put a good few layers of that on. And let it soak in. So, there we go. It looks better already. So there we go. Looks like new. Anything to do now is to try it. The shape isn't too bad. It's not too sharp at the point that I can't get a uh, a sharpener in but pointy enough that it'll work go down the side of a frog feels nice and comfortable in both hands nice now I've oiled it so there you go thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one